So hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Tiberi Rado. I'm a program manager on the Azure Stack team. Uh, welcome to our new episode in the um, Azure Stack Hub uh, partner series, partner solution series. Um, we are uh, today uh, joined by uh, Glenn from uh, Byte. Um, he, uh, although he's in lockdown, he was um, uh, happy to join us uh, and uh, kind enough to, to uh, join us to give us a bit of in, um, information on what exactly they do and how they, as a service provider, sort of work for their customers. I'll let Glenn introduce himself and tell us a bit about the, the company. For sure. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Glenn Neeland. I'm a glorified account executive, but I've got a more uh, fancy title, but we'll go with account executive. Um, I work at Byte Information Technology here in Australia. We have been uh, in existence for 25 plus years. Um, we started from a consulting background, so and we continue with that vein in our in our approach to our customers. So we we're looking at um, how we can improve their business, how we can actually meet and solve their problems without coming to them with a technology solution per se. Um, very very closely aligned with Microsoft, um, offer a lot of Microsoft solutions, um, particularly around Azure Stack, clearly, um, and also uh, Teams and enablement for the modern workplace. So we work in those spaces quite a lot. Excellent. Um, the, the solutions you offer, do they span Azure as well as uh, Azure Stack Hub? Yes, absolutely. So um, depending on the, the customer, um, we do a lot of work with uh, accounting firms, professional services firms. Um, in that instance, there's uh, the uh, Azure Stack Hub is a, is a really good tool for them because they're very um, conscious of data security and data sovereignty. Uh, and the customer requirements for uh, segregation of their data into nice, um, secure uh, tenancies, et cetera. So in that case, uh, Azure Stack Hub is fantastic for that. We can utilize that in an on-prem hosted solution. Um, we not so much in their, in their own buildings, but it's clearly in a, in, a, in a class one data center, those types of things. Um, and then we use the, the extension of that out into Azure Public for the the flexibility in that single pane of glass. Excellent. And your, um, do you have uh, Azure Stack Hubs which are dedicated to one customer or uh, which are multi-tenanted and have multiple customers um, onboarded? At the moment, we're, they're, they're very much single customer. So each customer has their own requirements. Um, so we've done uh, Azure Stack Hub it, as a as a hybrid model, we've also done uh, Azure Stack or HCI when they've had they wanted really dedicated um, high power and high performance, but on prem, but still with that same sort of uh, familiar interface of the um, Azure Stack. Um, Excellent. So it makes it easy for my team to manage and have consistency across the different platforms. Excellent. And your team will uh, be um, operating and managing the, the hardware and, or also working with the, the customer to build their, their solutions? Yes, um, hardware and then the solutions. Um, we will go as, as far up to the vendors level on the applications. Uh, and in some cases we'll do, um, if their requirement is there, we'll go and do integration work, um, extend it out into into to leveraging other services. Um, for example, one of our customers at the moment um, has a fairly significant SQL um, environment uh, and we're working with them now to, to start using SQL services out of Azure Public and, and, and blending that in across the, the Azure stack. And so it's, it's a mix of, um, of both consultancy, architecture, uh, support, trusted advisor, as well as managed services. It's a Correct. mixture of all the, the worlds. Um, have you uh, done this from the beginning with them or was it like a journey uh, to, to, to sort of get there based on the, the data privacy and regulatory requirements that you mentioned? Uh, look, in, in one, I'll give you one example where we had a customer that was um, it was on a journey themselves and they, they'd moved from uh, everything was on-prem probably four years before we were introduced to them. They went to an IS model but felt all they'd done was just lift and shifted their own issues to someone else to manage and they weren't at all satisfied. We actually introduced them to the concept of Azure Stack um, and talked to them about how we can leverage um, physical hardware and Azure Public and give you that, um, that nice 
sort of blend and single pane across the two. Um, and that is that has enabled that organization to stop to stop worrying about whether their environment's up and running and now they're starting to look at innovation and how they can enable the the technologies to meet the needs of the business so we we heard what they were talking about when we were initially talking to them uh, and that's how we sort of presented it uh, back to them and it really resonated with their cio he was very happy with that um, we now run roadmap um, every every month every quarter to go through and revisit, are we still delivering to the right direction? What's the next level of innovation? So that's been a great journey for that organisation. I can see that continuing on. They'll never, never, we'll never go backwards there. I think eventually they'll be all, um, they'll move a lot of more of their services to Azure. Um, but at the moment, they're they're putting their toe in the water and uh, but very comfortable with the the temperature. I see. Uh, so it's more of a journey, um, like a step-by-step -step journey. So probably the things that can go to Azure will go to Azure, and then uh, based on the the regulatory compliance security issues, you you will um, use on-premises to sort of host those workloads as needed. Right. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's a great um, point and, and um, that's one of the, the main use cases for Azure Stack Hub and something we've seen with many other partners as well where they use Azure Stack Hub as an accelerator for their Azure consumption rather than a replacement for Azure. I assume overall you, you're looking right now at the, the IaaS parts and, and starting with virtual machines and moving the workloads as is and are looking also at higher up services, so containers and app services and that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, you're absolutely spot on. So the issue that we come across with multiple customers is their applications, the, the maturity of their applications and the way they run, they're not ready for right. um, Azure services and Azure containers. They're, they're still the traditional IS model. They require a VM and then from a... Um, a value proposition to move them to Azure, it doesn't always work. Right. But the Azure Stack Hub gives us that um, great stepping stone so we can get them off some um, fairly antiquated and legacy equipment, get them onto modern architecture, and then we can chip away at it as, at, in a more systematic sort of approach and say, okay, let's test this one, move across. So um, going back to the example I was giving before, we have um, uh, an file services um, proof of concept running with them at the moment. So once that gets up and running, I can see a lot of their um, data that can be moved to Azure file services will go there because it, that they right. don't want the, the cost and effort of backups and storage and so forth right. and, and takes pressure off there. And their SQL environment, we're looking at database services and so forth and, and re-architecting a lot of their apps to um, to take leverage the modern um, database services that we can get to. And from an Azure Stack Hub perspective, even with these um, moving these VMs, for example, even if they are VMs, are you leveraging things like uh, ARM templates or infrastructure as code or um, any of the, the ARM dependency, the ARM uh, enablements, so to say? To be honest, I'd be speaking out of my technical pay grade to, to say to say whether we are or not. I know that we're, like we've been running Azure Stack Hub for coming up to two years that we've been utilizing it. Um, when we first started, I think we we're doing a lot of very uh, manual activities and I know the guys are now taking advantage of the, their, well, I think the, the feedback I've had is, I wish we had those tools when we first started, um, <laughs> which, is, which is always a always way, development comes a long way. Um, so certainly made it easier. We recently did a HCI implementation for a customer that needed on-prem equipment and that ran really smooth. It was, it was amazingly quick and uh, the customer kept saying, what do you mean you finished? Um, it was, so that was a, a great result. Excellent. Excellent. As these projects sort of onboarded and you've used, uh, your, your customers use Azure Stack Hub, they use Azure, they use Azure Stack ACI in a combination of, of manners, right? They, they have um, a number of ways of doing things, uh, but from a, a business value perspective, um, what are some of the lessons learned you, you've seen through throughout the, the years and uh, some of the, the gotchas that you, you've identified in, in these projects? 
I'll step back one from there. We we certainly have learned that it makes a lot of sense to get a really good relationship with the the hardware vendors. Um, obviously, when we're doing Dell Azure, we're doing Azure Stack. We're going to one of the preferred vendors, and we're stuck with Dell in this case, uh, and then leveraging their expertise of setting up the base level. So um, right. think, thinking you can do that yourself, thinking that you can um, just uh, follow the knowledge base articles and do that without assistance is is a lesson. Don't don't attempt it. Um, take Leverage the expert, pay the professional services. Um, from there, then I think the, the next lesson is, is really um, don't underestimate the complexity of the work you're doing, but at the same time, be prepared to reach out to to the knowledge that you can get from Microsoft or from Dell. Um, we, I think we struggled on the first one. We we took the old engineering approach of we can work this out. Um, so the very first one we did, we probably spent way too much effort and, and um, over, over invested in the solution. Um, post that, uh, we've learned to leverage that and uh, very much a, much more efficient and uh, cost-effective delivery. Excellent. And from your uh, customer um, workload perspective, um, do you have any insights on how the customers are or what types of applications they're using? I, I assume you're not um, using any ISVs to provide uh, um, things on top. The customers will, would bring their own applications or um, would you provide uh, the whole solution to them? No, in most cases, the customers are bringing their own applications um, and they can be everything from, if we're looking at accounting and legal side of things, they're, they're typically your, your various uh, accounting, auditing, um, those types of applications. Um, the example where we've gone with the HCI solution, there there are heavy graphics and drafting organisations, so that they need that strength or that, that power locally for them. So um, that they, they bring their own own licensing there um, and we found that the HCI solution for example on, on the, the graphics and, and the data um, speeds is there's been no issue no complaints whatsoever since right. we've installed it. in fact that the, the, the level of support we need to do for that organization has probably diminished um, significantly uh, which is great from our operations team yeah, that, that, that's what I want to say. I, I guess the operations team is happy about that part. Um, I, I don't think they, they would be uh, sad to, to, to have a system that works properly, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We just get into a routine and cadence and keep it up to date and patched, um, which is probably the other lesson learned. Um, staying on top of the developments that are happening in the Azure Stack Hub, um, keeping all the roll-up patches and all the, all the various Staying on top of that has been um, a lesson that you, you don't ever let get behind, um, right? Because you're missing out on the advantages that are coming with the new patches and the new changes. So, um, yeah, I think early on we were a little bit um, blase is probably the wrong word, but I think we were thinking, oh, yes, we'll roll this up in each quarter. But no, I think right. just stay on top of it. And, and when it's ready, we're basically one month behind and just keep going and keep on top of it. I think it's more, I think we've, sort of, we've touched on it, but it's giving the, the bandwidth um, for the organisation and for us to focus on innovation and, and customer enablement. That's really the area that I want to highlight. It's less about having to keep the lights on the lights are on so that, let's focus on how we furnish the room let's focus on how we how we can actually do the next step um that that change of spending every month just well, is it if we fix this if we fix this issue right. that's gone we're now focusing on okay what's the next step on our path to enable the organization to work more effectively and um one of our larger customers is now looking at how they can expand it out across some of their um if we look at it to we're providing support for the organization at the base level IT, now they're saying, okay, how do you expand and support our consultants so they can actually sell a service to our customer, their own customers. So right. it's um, jumping out the next level. Uh, that is a great point and, and a good good thing to to, to catch uh, because the what we've seen across all our uh, partners is the, the, the thing you, you are highlighting as well, where uh, instead of focusing on keeping the lights on, you are now focusing on creating value for the customer, enhancing their operational or development or DevOps processes. 
um, as well as focusing on the higher levels of the solution rather than keeping the lights on, as you've said. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for uh, staying with us and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.